Ever wonder how much more articulation you can get out of your Crosstrek if you disconnected the sway bar links? Stick around and let's find out. Hey everybody, Tom the Dilettante here. Hope you're all doing well. Over the holiday break, one of our viewers, Matthew, wrote a comment to me suggesting an idea for a video. He asked me if I still had all my sway bar links connected, and if so, why don't I try doing a video to show people what kind of articulation you might gain if you start pulling them off. The test he suggested is pretty straightforward. Basically drive the cross track up on some ramps, uh, one in the front, one in the rear, on each side of the car, and you'll end up three-wheeling it with one tire up in the air. He then goes on to suggest, now you start pulling off some links. Uh, starting with the rear sway bar links, you pull that off and you should be able to get up there and you'll still be three-wheeling it, but you'll have less air between the tire and the ground. And finally, he suggests go ahead and pull off the front sway bar links and you should be able to keep all four tires on the ground going up those ramps. Now, I used to drive a Jeep and I had quick disconnect sway bar links on that thing and they really did help a lot for articulation off-road. And his idea really got me wondering how much more articulation can you gain on a Subaru by removing the sway bar links? And then furthermore, how much on-road performance do you sacrifice by not having them connected? So in this video, I'm going to do half of this experiment. I'm going to drive us up on some ramps and see how it performs, see how high we are three-wheeling it when we get up there, take off the rear sway bar links, test it again, and then take it for a drive to see how it affects on-road performance. After all, 95% of my drive time is on blacktop, and I'm just not quite there as far as wanting to kill my on-road performance just for the occasional times I go off-roading. But you may feel different. So let's get this thing in the air and find out together. First, let's try driving up the ramps with X mode off. Aside from nearly running completely over my front ramp, we made it. Now let's turn X mode on and give it another shot. Alright, so we had to use X mode in order to get up these ramps uh, relatively easily. With a little bit of wheel spin and whatnot, we finally got up, and now we're three-wheeling it. And we've got about three inches of uh, clearance between the right rear tire and the ground. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect the rear sway bar links, do this exercise again, and see how we end up. Now with the rear sway bar links disconnected, we'll do the ramp test again. Alright, with the rear sway bar disconnected, we've actually gained about an inch and a half of articulation in the rear tires. Uh, before, with the sway bars connected, we had three inches gap between the bottom of the tire and the ground when we were three-wheeling it, and now we're sitting at an inch and a half even. So, not too bad. But there are some things to look out for. Right now, I suspect I'm pretty much uh, fully extended on my struts, and so perhaps if I had longer struts, I can get a little bit more articulation out of this still. And also, the brake lines are pretty close to being maxed out as far as the rubber part and stretched. So, if I did end up going this route long term, I'd probably get some extended brake lines too. I'm curious as to the driving characteristics of the car now with the rear sway bar disconnected. So, since I only disconnected the top part of the sway bar links, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the links completely and pull them out of the vehicle so they're not slapping around when I drive it, and then take it for a drive and see how it feels. So as our more astute viewers might have noticed, in the previous scene there was no snow and now there is. Uh, truth be told, I've been trying to film this for over a week now, but uh, you know how it goes, life just keeps getting in the way. So how does it feel now with the rear sway bar links disconnected? Um, driving around town on blacktop, I mean mostly you're driving straight lines anyway, you hard, I, I hardly notice it. Going around turns, I do notice a little bit more body roll. We'll take some turns here in a second as we get, uh, as we make our way to the highway. But it's nothing I would say really compromises performance, especially when you're talking about taking 
turns at a normal speed in the city. Now, if you're planning on drifting around corners and uh, drive like a nut, then yeah, you might notice a bigger difference. But for me, day-to-day -day driving, so far so good. So I wanna test a couple things. I wanna test just standard day-to-day -day driving around town, and so far that passes muster. Uh, nothing detrimental, I think I could live with that for sure. I also wanna test highway, uh, doing lane changes, uh, seeing how it performs at speed, uh, getting on, on ramps, exit ramps, and so forth. And finally, I'd like to test some uh, evasive maneuvers, like doing a rapid lane change, just in case of emergency or something, and see how it performs. Now, I'm not a professional driver. I don't have a test course or anything like that, so take my advice with a grain of salt. All I wanna do is see what I can live with. So I'm about to get on the highway here. Let's see, we're gonna take this entry ramp at around 40 miles per hour. A Little bit of body roll, but no more than usual. My wife drives a bone stock 2019 Crosscheck Premium, same make, model, and year, just different color. And I can honestly say that, you know, hers one being closer to the ground and having all the suspension components stock and connected um, doesn't exhibit as much body roll. But I'm not pulling high G's getting on the highway here. So for me, that was totally acceptable. All right, let's check a standard lane change here. At speed around 70 miles per hour. Barely notice the difference between stock and on the road, it tracks and performs fine. So I'm doing about 80 miles per hour on the uh, 294 here near Chicago, heading north. The 294 is just kind of like uh, Chicago's Autobahn. You can see I'm still getting past. <laughs> no respect for the speed limits on this road. Okay, let's do a swift lane change at around 80 miles per hour. Uh, no one's too close to me. Some guy might think I'm a nut, but we'll do a quick check. So, right lane change now. Yeah, a little bit of body roll, but uh, definitely doable. Let's go ahead and get off on this exit, see how the exit ramp feels. Exiting, braking, all normal. So, uh, so far I can say that uh, riding on the highway with the rear sway bar links disconnected really doesn't have an appreciable difference for me. At least not so much where I would feel compelled to uh, reconnect them out of concern for safety. Try to turn here around 30 miles per hour. Whew. All right, well, <laughs> got the traction control going on that one. I don't think that was because of the sway bar. Felt my front uh, hit that good old traditional cross trek understeer, especially with the added weight of the uh, worn bumper and winch. So uh, nothing unexpected there, I suppose. All right, not too much traffic here. Let's try a little bit of slalom action. I mean, you feel it a little bit more in the rear as far as body roll than you do in the front. Um, definitely feels a little bit looser when doing slalom-like movements like that. But that's more the exception than the norm. Um, all four tires still hug the ground. I felt in control of the vehicle. And it's not like this thing was a real ground hugger to begin with. So I think my verdict on that is that um, uh, the performance was acceptable with the sway bar disconnected in the rear. Okay, so my verdict. I think I'm gonna continue running without the rear sway bar link connected. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the sway bar itself since all I pulled was the link so far. The on-road handling characteristics, the difference is relatively negligible as far as how I drive in the day-to-day. -day. Uh, highway performance, regular around the town performance, uh, evasive maneuver and so forth, all seem acceptable for me. Um, if you're planning on doing this, make sure that you go ahead and test it out for yourself. Everyone's going to have a different comfort zone when it comes to how their car handles. This one happens to be okay for me. And uh, I suspect that the front sway bar will make a dramatically uh, larger difference in so far as performance. And so we'll get to that one next. I think that'll be one of my upcoming videos is how much more articulation can you gain when you disconnect the front sway bar links and how does it perform then? So. For now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the full sway bar off the rear and just kind of leave it set inside in the garage and I'll tool around town uh, without it connected. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Uh, if you decide to give this a shot, let me know. Leave some comments below. I'm curious how well you found 
uh, the performance and whether or not it's something acceptable for you to drive around with the disconnected. But until next time, thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a good one.